Yeah. The software, the GUI that I want to look at tonight is called Back in Time. This is available from le-web.org. I've looked at so many different pieces of software for Linux for doing my backups. Um, I've looked at uh, various different things that you know try to be uh, what Time Machine is to Mac OS and haven't been happy with any of them until I found Back in Time. Back in Time is a great little GUI and it's, of course, free for Linux users. Mm -hmm. So on this page, you see a link that says Download. There's a couple different download options. The first one is your DEB installer package and then you've got your source package, the tar.gz. We don't want to use any of those because what happens if they bring out a new version. We've got to go back to this website. We've got to download the new version. We've got to remove the old version, reinstall this version, or upgrade to the new version. It, it gets a little complicated. We want to use uh, what's called a repository. Um, so just scrolling down the page just a little bit, you'll see that there are repositories available for both Ubuntu Hardy and Ubuntu Intrepid. And I'm sorry if you're using something other than Ubuntu, but we are using Ubuntu tonight, so this is the demonstration that I'm giving. However, if you are using a different operating system, of course, you could uh, compile from source. Um, so I'm just going to copy that Intrepid uh, URL here. I've just double-clicked on it, and I'm going to copy that. And we're going to add this to our sources.list file, uh, which is basically our repository. Let's do this through a GUI, make it really simple for you. This is the, the program that holds all your repositories. I've gone up to System, Administration, Software Sources, enter your password. And now we're going to go up to third-party software at the top here and create a new, we're going to click Add, and we're just going to Control V, or you can also right-click and go Paste. Control V is your Paste key, and then Add Source. So then we can close that and just close. We don't need to reload here because we're going to actually do that from the command line. So then click on Applications, Accessories, Terminal. And first thing we're going to do, as I was saying, sudo apt-get update. Enter your password, and then this is going to get the repository information for uh, everything. Uh, next step, we've done sudo apt-get update. Just double-click on this. And then, or triple click, and then hit Control C to copy, or again, right click and hit copy. This is just going to give you a quick access to installing these uh, programs, or you can type that, of course, into your terminal. So now we want to just hit Alt E. See that, Carrie? How I'm pushing Alt E? We talked about that, I think, last week. Oh, yeah. For Using edit. Yeah. And then P for paste, and enter. And that's going to add that line. It's pasted that line that I copied from my web browser, and then just hit enter. We don't have to enter our, our password this time because uh, we already did. Now, I already installed this just to save time, so how awesome is that? So let's bring up the program for the first time. Okay. Applications, System Tools, Back in Time. So the first thing it's asking us is, where do you want to save these snapshots? It's going to default to your home folder, which is not a good place to save your backups, because you're probably going to want to back up that folder. So we're going to hit Other, and we're going to go into your home folder, and we're going to create a new folder, Create Folder, and we'll call this Backup. Okay. Go up to that folder, highlight it, go into it or whatever, and hit open. And that's going to set your folder to backup. Now, we need to create an exclusion so that the system does not try to backup that folder because it's already the backup. So I've set slash home slash Robbie slash backup. We want to add that as an exclude. So the one that you're excluding right now, mm -hmm. is that going to be like your foundation, like you were saying? That's going to be where we store our backups. Oh, okay. This could be an external drive. If it's an external drive, of course, connect the drive first and just make sure it's connected every time you want to run your backup. And one error that I just noticed, and you need to be aware of this too. Remember when I created that folder? I created it with a capital B. Yeah. And here I created an exclusion with a small b. Oh. Linux is case sensitive. So oh, we need to okay. be very careful of that. Home, Robbie backup. So we need to include that capital B. So now what we want to do is add our backup directories. I'm just going to be really, really quick about it. We don't want to add specifically our, our home folder. I would add like documents, add. Okay. Music, add. Just kind of like that. Okay. So very, very straightforward. And then if you want to create automatic snapshots, you can make it do it every hour, every day, every week, every month. Very, very straightforward. Okay. So that, what you've just what you've done right now, okay. that's what you're talking about by doing online backups? This is, we're just is storing this locally, because remember, okay. Carrie, we set our where to save snapshots to a local folder. Of course, because of the way Linux works, ingenious thing is, is that you could make a mount point in your computer, 
mount an SS SSH drive, which is like a, a computer somewhere else. It could be through the internet, could be a NAS storage drive, network attached storage. Okay. So in that, you would just tell it to save to that folder, which is actually a mount point for some other type of media, whether it be online okay. or whether it be whatever. So that's off-site backup because you're it sending be. it somewhere, right? You can save it anywhere okay. you like. Uh, but if you want to use an off-site backup in this case, you would have to create a mount point in Linux. And that mount okay. point would become, to this program, it would think it's just a folder on your computer. But and it's you actually... Would, but it's actually a drive somewhere. somewhere. It could be another computer in the house. Uh, it could be something halfway across the world. That's amazing. It's very cool. Yeah. yeah. And it makes it easy to grab files from, too. Um, so I'm just going to proceed with that. I've just mm -hmm. set all those things pretty basic and just hit OK. And, yeah. So that's... I don't have any music to back up, which is one of the folders. Oh, Mc McRippin's song is there. <laughs> so that's mm -hmm. cool. So once that's done, you can hit uh, take a snapshot if you like. And that's going to run your first ever snapshot. And you'll see a little icon that appears up there. And I think that's already done. Yeah. So now I've got my timeline now includes the snapshot that I just took. And keep in mind, like this is, this is not a super fast computer that I'm using, and it's already done. It's not very, didn't take long at all. So, um, so the next time that I run a snapshot, it's going to compare the contents of this backup to now. And you'll notice now it's done, but it didn't create a new backup because nothing new was created during this time. So let's say I just go into, let's just go into my music folder, and I'm going to create a new file or a new folder. Rename that folder, whatever. Within that folder, I'll create a new file. And within that file, let's just put some, some text. All right, so we'll save that file. This is within my backup path. So now, next time I run that backup, it's going gonna, it's gonna to automatically detect that there is a new file, and it's going to create a new backup in my timeline. So now you'll see that this backup contains all of the files that I had. However, it's also got, let's see, that's the one. It's also got my new high folder. And if I go into that folder, I can bring up my test file. And it will actually load it. It will actually open it. You can preview files just by double clicking on them or whatever. So then at the same time, Carrie, if I want, I can bring up my places and go into that folder that I created for my backup. So go into my folder and go into backup. Okay. And you'll actually see... Oh, <laughs> I accidentally changed it to save it into my videos folder. Oh, that was a mistake. That, that's why. That, that you don't want to <laughs> accidentally do. See what I did? I guess I clicked on it at the last second when I was zoomed in. I tend to do uh -oh. weird things when I'm zoomed in. So <laughs> let's pretend that was my backups folder. That's why my backups were showing as empty. Uh, if I go into videos now, you'll see a folder called <laughs> Back in Time. It's the lack of glasses. We can it's the lack of that. glasses, and it's also um, when I'm zoomed in, I tend to accidentally drag something and, and not realize because the, the mouse kind of loses a bit of its control. Oh, okay. So what can you do? So you see these two backups now that I've created, and you'll notice that each backup contains everything. So documents, see? So I go back to the other backup, and it also contains everything. But here's what's neat, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Let's go right back to the root here of my backups. And I'm going to right click on the first backup Kay. and go properties. And this is what I was talking about. Look at the size uh, 2.8 megabytes. Okay? Okay. Now I'll close that and I'll bring up the properties for this one. The one you just made? The second backup. The second backup is also 2.8 megabytes because that text file was like nil, right? Right. So you would expect that that means that the combined total of these two would be like six point something gigabytes, right. right? If I highlight both of those and go properties, it's going to add up the file, so we now have 44 files. Well, let's see here. I'm going to go up one folder because I think that's confusing. I'm going to click right click on the back in time folder, which contains both of those folders. Oh, okay. And you'll see 46 items, which is twice, you know, it's every, every file, but it still, still. only takes 2.8 megabytes on my drive itself. So even though we've got what we see as an exact copy of every single file for every single backup, because of those hard links, it saves a substantial amount of space on that computer. Okay. So that is back in time, really, really straightforward. I don't even need to get into a lot of uh, you know setup and things like that, because it is just absolutely simple to set up that GUI. Uh, but uh, check that out. We will post a link to back in time on our website, category5.tv, in the show notes for episode number 69 after tonight's show. Awesome.